Thank you for keeping up the conversation. I don't know if you know you voluntarily or involuntarily, but uh, I'm pleased to see someone. Um, you know, there is a um, cartoon calendars, this uh, for each day, little story. So one of these cartoons was like an uh, instructor coming, speaking to the audience in the class. Next time, instructor is coming, no one in the class, only the tape recorders. <laughs> and the third one, there is no instructor, there is a tape recorder on, on play, and the tape recorders will record. <laughs> so, uh, if you do have um, complete understanding of the both sides of this little um, printout, then you can either leave or win back and, and, and so on. So, um, we do have six meetings in class if you do uh, presentations on um, that be Friday and uh, six plus one if, if you decide on the maintenance. The plan is to absolutely accomplish all calculations on coming Wednesday. And one more went the will be just to uh, prepare videos for your presentations. The written reports are uh, suggested to be uh, in um, final form next Monday. Okay. So whatever you uh, collect data during the Wednesday. On Friday, there will be no lecture in um, regular sense. Instead of the class material, I will uh, entertain you with uh, my humble vision how to write papers. It, it will be silly. You know, that I will give you some suggestions how to organize and put it short and then on uh, I mean, Monday you uh, bring uh, your written reports printed three or maybe four copies. Three, three for sure. You, you, are, you, you have an idea of okay. So that will make okay. my life easier. And uh, then um, on the coming Monday, after you uh, do collective grading, your authors will get their uh, works back and do last evaluation. But uh, since it will be busy week, it's, it's better to have as good as a uh, complete final version of the Monday. Do you think it is doable? So is that report on our project? Or yes, on report on the project. Report on the project. And <clears throat> do not worry, all projects, like they, they have good scientific component, they are not challenged, but each project, and we are, we are spending like a month in there, but each project is possible to accomplish in one hour, and write down in two hours. We are just, just doing it a little slower so that uh, we have time to think and, and, and make strategic plans. Um, it's your choices. And we never talked about it. And before, um, 
this year a lot of throwback. Steven, if you are listening to here, please come next uh, Monday. Got it. Super. And uh, uh, yeah. you need it for the class for uh, making um, evaluating reports of each other, and also there will be uh, evaluation of instructor. So if you want uh, school to fire me and write something better about me, come on a Monday and write it. Um, so you already have the codes, most of you have the codes that work, propagate uh, with packets for a specific system and uh, you can rerun it and you have basic idea how to extract rates of reaction. So it appeals to your chemical uh, soul. Some projects are not falling in this category, but this um, Whoever doesn't fall in, into this flow chart, I will address it uh, personally. But more than half of the project fall into this category, into, into this flow chart. So you are selecting a uh, model. In, in most of models, there is a barrier. So chemical reaction is like coming across the activation barrier. And then uh, you select the model, you select the uh, initial momentum which corresponds to the temperature. If you do not have this, the equation that converts your value of P0 into temperature, I would be happy to help, but it is like very simple. P0 square over two mass, and then multiply by conversion factor from atomic units to Kelvin. And then you run it and compute rate, the like slope for population. And then repeat again this different initial momentum. And then you record this rate as a function of uh, temperature or momentum as a table. Then we completely skipped it, but I will address it on Wednesday uh, lecture and in uh, on the lab. So the table that you are generating is possible to fit into so-called Arrhenius form. Did you hear about it before? So I do not need to. And then out of Arrhenius, one can extract activation energy. And your scientific question for those who fall into this flowchart um, is to compare height of a barrier and uh, activation energy obtained through this indirect way. Typically, the activation energy from Arrhenius is lower than the barrier. And it is a key why many reactions happen at room temperature, although barriers are quite high. Okay, any questions? And uh, this is printed on your uh, reverse side. Make sense? And I just typed in how I, steps how I would do it. For this stuff. Table, uh, yield, rate, and then from this table one can uh, feed it into Arrhenius. No, no, no. Do not do Read only upper right, print three copies. <laughs> it's not yet the, the end. So now the second part. I, I'm going to violate my own principles and do things that I think is very wrong. I was believing for many years that the instructor has right to tell all the things that uh, he or she memorizes with closed eyes and only show derivations. So uh, showing prepared slides is not fair, but to compress time I will violate it and just jump a little bit quicker. It's not right because I should imagine myself on the other side and do one of the things that can be done in a short time. Though. Starting the lecture. Who we are and what are we doing? It is a physical chemistry class. We do want to predict out or interpret outcome of the uh, measurements coming for characterization of materials coming out of the instruments. And uh, in order 
to um, explain and to make these predictions, we are getting through some counterintuitive wave uh, properties of electron, interatomic distances, and, and rotations. And it's a little early to brag that uh, in this room we are masters of space and time and universe, but there are some humble progress in, uh, in some connections to experiments. Okay. Then, there is one fundamental feature of any material molecule and substantial class of measurements that was not yet covered in the class. And um, there is a growing expert who will uh, cover the subject in more details in the written report and presentation. And he is on the connection. So uh, let's guess uh, which popular characterization experiment we didn't cover in uh, in the class. Just make guesses. And if if uh, if no one gives uh, right suggestions, then Stephen will uh, put microphone on and uh, answer because I know that he has absolutely covered answer. Like we, we already covered uh, spectroscopy, like UVs, partially uh, um, infrared, partially rotational, vibrational. We were speaking about um, ionization to some extent, about the like uh, electrochemistry of uh, electro uh, electrons being like, facilitated to leave or enter into multiple uh, cube. But what is in the second building of the dumbbell? What else? Yes. What is NMR? Okay. Uh, electron spin will be EPR, but it is the same. From math point of view, they are the same. EPR and NMR are several orders of magnitude different in signals and frequency of space to be cute. But uh, from a mathematical point of view, they're absolutely the same. So, uh, which property of the electron we didn't cover yet? So, right. And if you be shame on me if you don't. So we, you know, even in high school, when you, we all speak about hydrogen atom, we speak about four quantum numbers principal, orbital, magnetic, and spin. Right. So, it is kind of in. Uh, our everyday knowledge will grow. So the goal of today's academic part of the lecture is to just make a step towards spin. And some classes in physical chemistry and classical quantum theory put it as chapter number one, which is possible. And if uh, we all would be mathematicians, it would be the sh shortest thing. It doesn't appeal to intuitive nature of um, material scientist, but from a mathematical point of view, it's the simplest system. So uh, there are several systems that can be described by pen and paper, like free space, box, oscillator, hydrogen atom, and speed. Because there are only two states. We are going to start covering what is it, and probably I'll squeeze a lot of material on today and Wednesday part of the lecture, so that you have some uh, positive comments. <coughs> what is this? Prediction. So, through our effort in this class, you did a tremendous growth and progress towards advanced mathematical concepts, which may be a little bit too much for the uh, physical chemistry course, but now you have your hands untied and can uh, analyze complicated systems. So it's more like a universal approach to quantum theory. And together, we got some healthy benefits in understanding oscillator nature of oscillators through creation and manipulation of the variables. 
in the instead of intuitive Cartesian projection, you are speaking in, in the space of abstract space of, of eigen states. And then one can make this uh, statement with jumps between states. This is quite universal approach. One is using uh, the same approach for concept of spin, which is less intuitive. But ma mathematically, if you, be, if you have, a, have a lot of similarities to harmonic state. So ma mathematically, there will be raising and lowering operator, okay. uh, energy operator, number of excitations, which can be either zero or one. So it is mathematical part of this thing. What was the last subject that we accomplished in this class? Yes, so like um, some basics of rotational motion. So if we approach speed, not from mathematical point of view, but from the everyday common sense and scientific intuition, one should establish logical connection between rotations and rotational motion. So it is a extrapolation of the concept of rotations. I need to put uh, microphone book and uh, say some, something uh, heretical that will help you to go through the material, but please do not repeat it in public. If electron is like a little globe, then spin is rotation of this globe around itself, one direction or another direction. This is good for conceptual understanding, but it is it is wrong in many aspects. So, um, if you select instead of polymers, um, coatings, chemistry by chemistry, if you select physics major, track, there will be problems. Like what should be the velocity of a surface of electron if it is a globe that rotates to get sufficient angular momentum? And the answer will be that it should be several times bigger than the speed of light. So it is, it is not correct. It's only for us to understand. Now it's time to put microphone on again and uh, introduce it a little more boring, not as as bright, but more more correct. So, if by the end of the meeting we arrive to this slide again, it will be a good. Uh, Too early to speak right now, but there will be brief discrete vectors, space of vectors for quantum states and uh, matrices for periods. But since there are states, all matrices are very small. From year to year, I am um, postponing typing in this equation, but it is maybe the most important equation of today's meeting if you are looking to a real life, to material science, to chemistry, to a model of So if you have a system of spins, either electronic or spins of electrons or spins of nuclei, then and you are setting up uh, NMR facility, you are observable the observables will be related to magnetization of your center. And magnetization, which is better, you will have a way with compass or other little methods. Right? So it has direction. The magnetization uh, depends on, on the orientation. So there is a vector. And spin, I'm introducing some concepts that I promise to support mathematics. Right now, they are in the air. I invite you to accept them as hypothetical. 
So although spin uh, has two states, but there is a way to speak about three projections of spin that can have orientation, not just two, but three. And if orientation of spin in space is known, and we do have collection of many spins, then sample with all these spins generates magnetic field. And this magnetic field is uh, proportional to summation of all spins together times a constant, which is uh, called more magnet and divided by alpha. So if you're looking into uh, real life problems, you need this approach. From now on, I will stop speaking about real life and we'll speak only about spin life or what, what is needed. So, charge of effort on constant mass of light. So, this whole fundamental concept, no, it's not an experimental thing. We will not get to this slide today. It will be likely the last slide of Wednesday. And uh, it will be dedicated, Wednesday will be dedicated to uh, a medium for. Stephen. So his uh, project is related to uh, NMR and we relate to the concept of spin vector with three components um, performing motion or in a uh, circular way. And we will get simplest so solutions, simplest example of such uh, motion of a spin at the end of uh, one thing. It's uh, 18 minutes before the end, and we finally start. So, oh, John is here. This was for you last time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you were watching. So, if you have circular motion, cross product, um, radius vector times momentum gives angular momentum, and uh, mathematically, uh, cross product gives three components. X component Y and Z, right? And uh, this will be projections of angular momentum. If it is two dimensional rotation, it will be only Z projection. And if we practice uh, this um, determinant, then Z projection will be operator of position for X dimension times operator of momentum in Y dimension minus operator of uh, momentum in x dimension times uh, the rate of uh, position in, in y direction. Here is a space for two weeks of another lecture. If one carefully, remember, we were practicing position by momentum minus uh, momentum by position uh, Mutation, right? That you all were successful. I remember. I, I saw you. If one practices the same approach, wasting like another few weeks, all this um, projections of angular momentum, one will find another fundamental algebraic connections, commutational relations. Between these three projections. Before we had like uh, only one dimension, position, momentum, and unity operator. Three operators were connecting to each other through commutation relation, algebra of operators. If we will have uh, operators of angular momentum, we will also abate, if I'm not in the definitions and practices, uh, these operators will obey so called uh, also commutation relation. So if one swaps and builds a product of rotation around x-axis and y-axis, and then swaps the dimension with the equivalent uh, to the rotation around, around another axis. So there are commutation relations. And they can be proved the same way as we did for position economy, just a little more, but always doing waste of time. And it is a cyclic uh, re replaceable. If you put like X, Y, and Z, if you be correct, if you put X, Y, and Z, if you go to flat. So it's like a cross algebra of the 
But how should we look on this? There are quantum equivalents corresponding to rotation around different axes. In a couple of slides, I'm going to give an argument that uh, spin is analogous to rotation. And if we establish operators for spin projection in, in different in three directions, one expects that operators for spin projection should also obey similar commutation relations. Idea. Now you accomplished two bits of windows. <laughs> and this is a vector model of uh, atom. It's not just another one. So do not repeat in public that spin is a rotating wave. If, if you have a sphere that can rotate, and angular momentum has different directions, but one sets up a, a restriction, same as all the time in the quantum world, that uh, rotations are permitted only with a certain angular velocity, a certain value of angular momentum. And unlike massive objects, like uh, rotation for tightening of moments, for rotations of spins, there are only two Values of angular velocity per meter. One that corresponds to angular momentum and constant over two rotation clockwise, and with negative rotating opposite counter clockwise. Right? Rotating one direction and another direction. This is not a new concept for you anymore because we already spoke about rotational motion like in more models. But for this magnetic quantum number, it can rotate forwards and backwards. Same for this spin. Rotates forwards and backwards, but not any integer number, but only, only one. Like um, car with stick shift, only one transmission forward, one transmission backwards, and uh, velocity can be either plus 5 miles per hour or minus 5 miles per hour. And it, it doesn't trump it immediately, but So, if you have Two states of rotation, clockwise and counterclockwise, and do not forget not never tell it in public. Then the, this quantum system has two basis states: rotating, forwards, rotating, and one state is eigenstate, another uh, eigenstate. But their superposition, when it simultaneously rotates forwards and backwards, which is a, a little crazy from um, common sense, but uh, from the Bohr model consideration, you saw that one can build up superpositions of several rotations. Then, general <coughs> state of uh, spin will be superposition of these rotations forwards and backwards with generally unknown coefficients if you, if you didn't set up what it is rotation. If it rotates completely, for sure, backwards, it will be. C sub alpha 1, C sub beta 0. If it relates opposite direction, this one will be 0, this one will be 1. If it will be like 50 50, it will be 1 squared, 1 squared. Okay. So, um, for more than This is the simplest implementation of Schrodinger. Nothing can be simple. A little quiz without grading, just uh, um, inviting you to help. Feel the point. When we had regular rotations, angular momentum in units of Planck constant, actual value was taken at 0, 1, 2, 3. Degeneracy was going like 1, 3, 5, 7. Like S, P, D, And then there are also uh, values for uh, dimensionless energy and, and, and uh, gender. If we want to, I don't know how to explain it by word, but suppose we want to feel again to have rotation a little slower than one. 
and a little quicker than some no rotation as well. What you do with the value here and what you do with the degeneracy? Yes. Uh, last year it was sensor fired. Yes. So uh, it, it's just summary of what we just discussed. Energy of rotations with angular momentum uh, one constant over two forwards or backwards should give the same energy. Maybe even, and it will be degenerous. Will be. Okay, approaching a little bit further to the to the table. So, from mathematical point of view, there will be nothing new. You're already much more experienced than you were mathematically solving uh, problems that are on the next level. So, in some sense, we are doing uh, downshift and uh, living in the woods. If you have only two states. And um, one can uh, speak about spin in the language of expansion coefficients over this distance. Then no one forbids us to write down this expansion coefficients as a little column value. Right? No one objects. Then the in this two-dimensional space of vectors. The spin up will be expansion uh, coefficients one zero, spin down will be zero one. And now we can write down this vector of two components as a superposition of two basis vectors with two projections. Same as we do do in uh, Cartesian two dimensional geometry, Euclidean geometry. Two basis vectors, one is one. And then any point uh, in space is uh, projections of x and y. Right? So alpha is one zero, beta is zero one. First two lines in the picture. So now we are calling steep man, come to us. When we were speaking about uh, density of states and uh, harmonic oscillator, we called steep man, come to us. And it was transitions either in energy or just climbing different levels. Right? Here it is a little oversimplified. There are only two stairs, two, two levels, right? Or one step. Ground level and on, on one step. But we can set up the procedure of walking up and down, up with plus, down with minus, in such a way that applying this raising operator uh, promotes us from alpha to beta, over an operator from beta to alpha. Except same logic. Now, can we, you're already well familiar. Any of you can just take the slides and present them. We're all familiar that if quantum state, if the wave function is a vector, then the operator is a matrix. Right? Yes, yes. So if the vector is two-dimensional, the matrix should be two wave. The question is which matrix can be plugged in place of this S plus and in place of this S minus? How can we find this? We just write uh, vector one zero zero one here and uh, solve for a known coefficient. Right? So it is not uh, a tool to torture young minds. It's made by humans for humans to simplify that. And if you haven't solved, 
<laughs> we set up uh, this equation that we need to solve for these four coefficients. But if you carefully do it algebraically, one would see that uh, by practicing, if, if one uh, feels three with zeros and one with one, you can feel it. So um, if you do. First, for this element, you do rho by column, right? Zero times one, zero times zero, you be zero. If you do a uh, second one, you get one times one, plus zero times zero, you be one, right? So it matches what we need. So it is algebra, uh, matrix representation of the, whatever we call it, uh, Whoever finds errors, please let me know for the script and maybe some plus. I think you should call it class instead of plus. But raising it, great. Raising not like a dried uh, grape, but more like going up. Same way here. If you do row by column, you get one and two. So, uh, lower and greater that promotes from B to 12. We are looking on the lines 2, uh, 3, and 4 on the table, but we are not yet done. There is something on the uh, web, and we need to cover it. Why did we? Admit direct notation. Brian Kess. Because it is universal. It uh, allows to play some mathematical and algebraical tricks equivalently for continuous and for discrete representation. So, and by the definition of um, You correct me if, if you see me wrong, but if we go uh, raising from alpha to beta, it should be initial on the right, final on the left. If you go from beta to alpha, it will be initial on the right, final on the left. And um, one can check that such operator will transform beta to alpha because there are like uh, Head, bra, head, but one can refocus on them and look these two beta's as um, orthogonal generation. And then it, this cancels and will be alpha. Mm -hmm. okay. And same with uh, um, complementary period. It also works for the uh, same principle as we did to find the ground state of the uh, harmonic oscillator. If you try to apply lower an operator to the lowest state, it will give you right? because of the beta and alpha through orthogonality RT. So now we are complete line three and four of the of the dictionary. Right? So the same operator can be represented either as matrix or algebraically through bright and K. Last minute for over time. You, you're over time if you need to go to three. I'm, I'm not holding it anymore. It's completely flat. Very interesting observation. If you multiply these two operators by each other, notice that they both were all dead. But if you multiply them, it will be dead. If you multiply them in the other order, it will be again uh, diagonal, but the one will be in different place. If you add together this raising times lowering plus lowering times raising, it will give you unit matrix. So same as um, in the A dagger A in the harmonic oscillator, one needs to commute them to get one. Here we class them to get one. 
And if one, instead of coefficients uh, one and one, one puts energy of state alpha and state beta, it will be immediately energy. Last time. Okay. Meeting is done. I'll stay here to answering uh, questions. Again. I heard it was like this, 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 this.